Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar on equipment tracking in Office 365 and in SharePoint on-premises. We thank you for joining us. Hope everyone's having a good morning. So now, here's some details about this. Uh, Jeff Pre, uh, well, my name is Scott Restivo. I'm CEO, founder of Crow Canyon Systems. I'll give a short introduction, and then Jeff Preeth, our VP of Sales and Business Development, will lead will lead the webinar. He will show some slides, give some background on the equipment tracking, and then launch into a live demo of the equipment tracking program. Now, as far as asking questions, the GoToWebinar does allow you to type in questions. We'll be answering them as we go. It, it's not live interaction, as you probably know. Uh, we can do that anytime you want on a one-on-one -on -one demo. After this, you know, we can arrange a, a time to talk about your equipment tracking needs, see if Office 365 or SharePoint, our programs in that, are going to meet your needs uh, and have a discussion. We always like talking to customers and getting what their challenges are and trying to see if we can meet them with our applications. Uh, we also will be doing a, an asset this is equipment tracking, meaning, let me explain that a little. Equipment tracking, we mean equipment that is non-IT at this point, because we'll be doing one on IT asset management, which is a different animal uh, at three hours from now at 11 Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern. IT assets involve network discovery, you know, computers, servers, mobile devices, all those, whereas this webinar is focused on equipment. By that, we mean things that might be used in the field or in uh, buildings or in, on the factory floor, things such things as vehicles, uh, factory equipment, uh, built HVAC, uh, could be tools, it involves plant preventive maintenance, inventory, so a lot of different things that are unique to the equipment side that are diff diff quite a bit different than the IT assets needs. There are some similarities in the program. They're all based on a platform or a layer that we developed that Jeff will go into and uh, we'll also have a recording available for this uh, this one and the asset management one available up on YouTube and our video library once we're done with this so with that said I'd like to launch into the presentation there's Jeff <laughs> getting ready to go I guess so Jeff why don't you take it from here and uh, go 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 for it Great. Thanks, Scott, for the introduction. And I also want to thank you all for joining. Um, and uh, today, the, the goal, we did this, this webinar yesterday. This is a repeat of, of, of that one for those that, have, of course, you know, this fit your schedule better. What we want to do, though, is in this, in this webinar is to focus on equipment tracking, the why, and the how. <clears throat> As you see from the titles, it's first and the disappearing act. And we call that as your sort of first primary goal is to understand what equipment you have. We're going to go through this sort of why uh, and go through the details. But what I want to do before I even get into that is to talk a little about Crow Canyon, our background, just so I can uh, illustrate our, our expertise and, and experience within SharePoint and Office 365. We've been um, doing this for almost 20 years prior to... Uh, to SharePoint at its launch in 2001. We were developing solutions on Microsoft platforms as well. Uh, and then sort of a, adopted that as, as the primary platform to, uh, to develop various business solutions. This happens to just be one of a suite of solutions that we offer as out of the box programs. And uh, we've delivered uh, um, thousands of installations and service a global community. We also have a, a number of uh, custom development projects. People come to us based on our experience, as well as we have this framework or platform um, that we that we develop on, or a layer. We'll call it a layer um, that we will that serve as a sort of this starting point for us to create any custom solution. So in this nitro layer that we've branded as a nitro layer, what we've done is we've created. And on-prem, uh, in Office 365, the architecture is slightly different. On-prem, we've developed a suite of web parts. Office 365, we've used the app model. Um, and we follow all Microsoft best practices to create these solutions to become a no-code uh, environment for any of our um, clients to manage our solutions um, 
in in a very intuitive uh, way without uh, you know any any code um, being necessary to do that. Now this nitro layer to show you sort of a graphic here. What I mean by that is this nitro layer runs on both SharePoint on premises as well as Office 365, and there is there are three sort of tiers. Um, that are involved in this layer that we that we focus on. One is the user experience uh, and and the look and feel. And part of that includes is a you know the, the use of forms, the use of portals in which um, someone can come and interact through sort of a, an intuitive, graphically you know appealing interface to be able to interact with uh, with the solution, as well as workflow and process processes. So workflow being all the automation. Um, as we, it, there's this buzz in the industry of digital transformation, and, and what does that mean? It's consolidating and aggregating a lot of different solutions and and, and components into a, a workspace that um, that becomes you know user friendly. But also, there's all the automation on the back end that needs to be considered. And we have a powerful workflow engine that allows the creation of very simple workflows. Uh, something as simple as a, an auto assignment or an escalation to very complex workflows based on um, a number of different business conditions. And then the business uh, intelligence piece of it in, in reporting and analytics. We have a, a report engine that we have available in the product, um, but also we, we understand that um, Organizations, every organization is slightly different. They have different sort of methodologies in, what, in which they approach reporting, and whether it be Power BI, Crystal Reports, SQL Reporting, whatever it might be, the, the options are there to use our tools as well as uh, other tools to, to, to generate those types of, of reporting that becomes actionable. Now, let's just jump right into this equipment tracking discussion on why we need to consider equipment tracking. Now, I'm going to, as we go to this next slide, I'm going to kind of kick this off by, by talking about a sort of a common conversation that we have with, with people who contact us looking for some solution to track their equipment. Um, generally speaking, this could be you know a facilities group. It could be a group um, that uh, simply has uh, a number of pieces of equipment that's in their, um, you know, that they're authorized and to use as well as they, they're required to maintain. Um, it, it, it serve, we service all different verticals and industries, whether it be uh, healthcare, manufacturing. Um, we even have, um, you know, a number of, for example, one of you know, the world's largest concrete companies in Europe that, uh, that use our solution to track equipment. So it's not really necessarily in industry specific, but it's more specific to the need and requirement to track equipment. So this conversation that we have, we ask our customers, well, what are you using today? And I would say the most common answer that we get is spreadsheets. So an Excel spreadsheet to track, which is great. The, the fact that they're tracking it today is, is good. Uh, a number of clients uh, will you know, have nothing in place, they they have the equipment, but they just kind of ad hoc uh, do the maintenance um, and then, and then manage it, just kind of knowing that they have this equipment sort of off the top of their head. And then the third would be using some other solution, uh, third party solution to to manage equipment. Now, as we as as we talk to the majority of our customers who are using a spreadsheet and they have this list of equipment, what comes up and and what they've realized they've come to realize is that having a list of equipment is just not good enough. Uh, there's a number of other things that need to be considered that aren't that that really can't be managed on a list. Now, and also a spreadsheet is not necessarily a system. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool things you can do with spreadsheet sheets, but it's not really a system. There's no automation that can be baked in, etc. So, uh, you know, for us, it's it's important to sort of take this holistic approach and have a 360 degree view of your equipment to understand several things. For example, having first of all visibility. Visibility into the equipment that you have, which we'll call it the list, but also visibility to all of the things that are that are happening with that equipment. For example, there's support. Uh, there's end users that might need to submit a request for a piece of equipment. So that could be a loaner piece of equipment. There could be an issue or break fix. Um, request that comes in as well. Um, there's this concept of maintenance, plan preventative maintenance, uh, creating work orders and tasks, um, whether it be, again, ad hoc or automatically through um, a process or a, a, 
a schedule to properly maintain equipment, as well as this concept of control, reducing unwanted spend, controlling the equipment that you've purchased uh, and the usage of that equipment. Now, from a foundational perspective, you know, here are some questions that we'd want to ask ourselves is, first of all, what equipment do I have? Where is that equipment? What, where is it being used? Who's right now in, in charge of that or who's using that equipment? And then the maintenance that's, that's required for that equipment. And so as we also look beyond those basic questions, we understand from sort of the financial att attributes of the equipment, there's a, an enormous amount of money invested in equipment and one of, there's there's information that needs to be connected to our uh, the, the, the equipment database that uh, that we need to be aware of and one would you know right here as you see on this you know is it purchased is it leased uh, what did this cost us um, is there some contractual uh, agreement in place and commitment and a maintenance perspective, what, what is my ongoing cost? What am I paying uh, for, for ongoing maintenance? And depreciation, when did I buy it? When is, uh, from a life cycle perspective, when are we going to retire this equipment? And or is it fully depreciated? Have we already paid for it? And now essentially the financial commitment on that is over. And then this also is going to help us, all this information is going to help us for financial planning and budgeting. <clears throat> from from a it, generally from a facilities the question the comments and, and and conversations we have with facilities directors out there is that we need to be able to plan in the future um, uh, financially around all of our assets that are going to need to be replaced. For example, consider HVAC systems or other systems that have some life cycle but are critical to the um, to the uh, the building, whether it be again heating and cooling or some other system that <clears throat> that is required. So generally, those have some life cycle, whether it be 10 years, 15, 20 years. We need to plan for those things in the future. Now, as as we look at equipment tracking, we talk about I keep kind of harping on this concept that a list or a, just a, a, a simple database of of equipment um, and the equipment you have is just not enough. So if we look at this graphic here. We have equipment in the center, obviously being the core focus of, of equipment tracking, but then there's all these other components that are critical and important for us to, 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 to manage, to truly manage equipment, whether it be all of the, the daily sort of work orders that we have and, and, and work, tracking work. Um, in those work orders, there could be you know, parts and, and cost of parts, parts, um, parts that uh, you know, are coming from inventory. We have an inventory module. We won't show you the inventory module today, but understanding all things involved in the day-to-day -day work. If they're at the top, this plan for this PPM or plan preventative maintenance is really getting things on a schedule so we don't have to, we're not reactive or more proactive in our approach. Now, the, the, the plan preventive maintenance, there's some pros and cons to that. The pros is that we actually have that in a system and, and we have those things that are, uh, you know, work orders that are, that are being created automatically, but it does um, require planning and requires time to, to get those schedules uh, in, in, in place um, in the system so those things then will happen. So there's some work up front in doing that. You'll see here there's a you know, purchase request, so, you know, equipment that needs to be purchased, parts that need to be purchased. Um, we do have a purchase request component here that allows you to submit that, a, a purchase request that will then go through an approval process and then potentially in the system you'll see as well as that there is a, um, a PO that you can convert a purchase request once it's been approved to a PO that could be shipped out to a vendor to make that purchase. And then down here at the bottom we have the contract and vendor management. So these are all contracts whether it be lease agreements, some service agreement, some warranty that is connected to equipment as well as who did you buy that equipment from. And there should be maybe one other arrow too because there, <clears throat> there's contracts with vendors um, that we have as well. So we, we want to connect the fact that we have a contract that we came from a purchase request that's connected to equipment that's connected to a vendor. And so we again this 360 degree view um, you know, becomes um, very, very helpful. Now, before I go on to the next slide, I want to throw out a poll question and uh, sort of just see if I can get your, your feedback or input um, on wh what you guys are using. I kind of gave the scenario of the common conversations we have with our customers, 
um, and what they are, are currently using uh, to track equipment. But I'd like to get your feedback on what you're using today and see if that falls in line with uh, what, what we see in the marketplace. So as, as you guys are voting here, um, what, what we'll do is as soon as I, we finish up with this in another you know, 10 seconds, I'll go ahead and close it. We'll post the results. And we'll get back into uh, the, the deck. And we're almost done with the deck. We'll get, as soon as we finish up with the deck, we'll jump right into the demo itself. All right, great. It looks like most of you have voted already. I'm going to um, close this poll and share the results. And you'll see here that, um, which is interesting here, that we have some, some that, are, that don't have anything in place, which again is very common. Spreadsheets and other software, again, are, are this is falls right in line with um, with the conversations that we have today, and and of course the other software are always interested to know you know what other software you guys are using, and then of as we as we're talking today, this is really our solution is built on the SharePoint and Office 365 platforms. Many of our customers are using other software, but they really would like to leverage that investment in Office 365 or SharePoint and so they're you know, generally willing to, to at least explore and then perhaps move to um, off another piece of software onto the SharePoint or Office 365 platform. So wanted to thank you now for providing those results and let's just jump right back into the presentation. So moving on to the next slide, it's really just, I'm not going to read all this stuff to you here, it's just equipment tracking, some of the features in the system. You'll get a copy of this after um, this, after the, uh, the webinar, within a day or two, it'll probably be sent a link and you can go and review this on your own. But there's a number of features that kind of span all these different areas that I mentioned um, previously. So business intelligence is another t big topic um, with pretty much every client we ask you what are your top three challenges and almost always reporting the lack of or you know the limited reporting that they have in a current solution or the fact that you know they're using a spreadsheet or nothing uh, a lot of that work has to be done manually and so when we're looking at reporting we uh, can as these four different areas we can we I'm, again we won't go into detail on this reporting, but I also want, want to let you know that we have a very robust reporting engine. There's a lot of data in this system that can then be pulled out and parsed out and, and, and create reports that become actionable. So from creating budgets to understanding all of your purchase and lease um, uh, equipment, as well as identifying discrepancies. So that could be something of just service failures or looking at audits. Um, from an auditing perspective, depending on your organization, there could be OSHA, you know, audits or requirements around there or other types of audits that you want to comply with and you can get that data out of the system, as well as optimizing utilization. A lot of our clients have equipment. Some of that equipment either isn't used um, and it's just sitting there collecting dust and or they just they want to understand, you know, as we're optimizing utilization is, you know, what is, what is all the, the equipment that's actually assigned out on projects, um, and then um, and then who's actually assigned that equipment and, and using it, using that, and maybe you know just looking at that data and being able to understand how to better um, utilize equipment. Now, so at this stage, let's just jump right into the demo. I'd also encourage you as we're going through the the presentation. Yesterday, we had a lot of interaction from our our um, attendees. From, from a questions perspective, they, we had a lot of questions that came through. Uh, a lot of those came as we were doing this demo, uh, people asking, you know, how does this work or can this solution um, do this or that. So I I really encourage you to ask those questions because this is a time that uh, I'm really talking at you showcasing uh, the product and showing you the features and functionality, but I'm really, it's, it's really a high level overview. There's not. This is, we're not going to go so deep into this to answer all of your questions. But if you have questions, we do have some time at the end that we'll we'll dive into those. So what I want to start with first of all is is kind of explain 
this uh, this is the our Office 365. I'm sorry, our our on-prem. I will show you a an example of our Office 365 solution as well, which it looks just like this. Um, but there's a you know I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna showcase uh, one of our clients and how they wanted to use the system, and we'll show that Office 365 environment. This this is a, an on-prem 2013 environment and if you have if you're moving to or you have 2016 and we have a solution for that as well uh, so when we're looking at this this interface here I'm going to kind of explain to you across the top we have a number of different items in the nav bar so this home the employee portal knowledge base reports center equipment and purchase or this really equipment is the center of, um, of of this solution and these, the rest of these are just supporting components. So equipment, there's equipment um, list, and there's a number of things that we have within equipment. One of the reasons I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with, and this is kind of show you, this is the equipment site. You'll see that there's a theme throughout the solution that we use a similar design, a similar you know, features, um, and that's just really based on a lot of feedback that we've gotten from our clients that, that say, you know, we, if it, if it looks different. And people get confused, so we have some, you know, some similarities in in the design. But what I want to do is, before I get into the equipment, I want to start with this work order piece or requests on the request management work order side, because a lot, a lot of times, um, an equipment itself actually might come into our inventory by a request, and so a lot of times that life cycle starts with a request. And so the request, this is, even though it says work orders, this can be kind of uh, a dual um, purposed component of this where we have both work orders as well as requests. So, and I'll show you that there's a, there's a way that the employees can interact. So the request might be, hey, I need, I need to borrow this equipment or use equipment, I need to request, maybe if, it, if you're, involved with facilities, somebody has a requirement to do an office move or they have, um, you know, the lights are out in, 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 their, in their particular building space and they need, you know, some type of break fix or repair. So, but also on, from a work order standpoint, this is the environment in which all work orders are, are created and tracked. So some of these work orders are created. Uh, you can see that there's a you know a large list of different work orders um, that will be here, but all work orders are either created manually and or automatically. So the automatic can be created in what we call a recurrence, which is just a simple recurrence that there's a essentially a task that needs to be done at some schedule, some interval. And so we can create those recurrences and those work orders will just be auto-generated based on your configured um, frequency. We also have plan preventative maintenance. The so plan preventative maintenance is, is this is kind of a as a work order system kind of on its own but plan preventative maintenance I'll show you in a second is really more aligned with equipment. So you have equipment that has, take for example an HVAC system that you have quarterly um, um, maintenance and then perhaps there's you know twice a year you do an inspection on that so the plant preventive maintenance component in, on the equipment um, side of things that we can schedule that on, on those frequencies and then those will be created uh, again as work orders for this PPM piece so when we're looking when we create this uh, these environments we have we we'd like to, to leverage and most of our clients you know will this is all installed out of the box but is it is leverage these workspaces so from a manager perspective you have a, a certain set of, of information or data that you want to look at daily so this would be an example of a manager workspace the nice thing about SharePoint in office 365 is it's highly flexible none of this is static all this stuff can be modified changed, move around so you can see there's a combination of what we call list views cut uh, custom list views as well as Dash, dashboard reports and each one of these dashboard reports and this is common this is comes directly from our report center and and you can build these on your own so if these don't represent the reports that you want to see it's very easy just to change those and um, and, and input or insert different different reports but these all have drill down capabilities so if we're looking at uh, we want to see staff load all of our staff or our field Text that are out there. Here's you know me. I want to go and look. I can click on that. It will open up the six items, and so all these have drill down capabilities. We also have capability um, to 
to then take some other actions on these, whether we want to print it, do we want to email it to somebody, I'm going to go open up this ribbon and you'll see that uh, you can do some other things. We can change even, this is all real, represents real-time data, so perhaps someone says, hey, I need a report for last month, so we can just come in here, simply put those date parameters in there, apply that, and then we can email it to that person, we can print it out, we can export the data to Excel, PDF it for perhaps a deck that you're creating, as well as we can create a schedule which will then auto send uh, this report to a distribution list or some you know, group of individuals or some you know, single individual and then you can sort of set it and forget it within the scheduling um, piece there. And then down below, more, more list views. So there's you know, work orders, my assign, maybe there's an, an, a manager actually is, you know, has some escalations or some other work orders, all over your tasks from the team, pending approvals, unassigned work orders, it can then be opened up and then, you know, triaged and then assigned out. So there's, there's all this, this is to serve um, the manager and provide that, these insights into what's going on within um, the work order side of things. Now similarly, we have a staff workspace, so if you were to log in and you were staff and you were a manager, if you're staff, you're not going to have access to the manager workspace. You'll have access to your workspace, which will be just your work. Looks similar to this, but it's just going to be um, work that's been assigned to you. Now, what I want to do here is I, I don't want to spend tons of time here on the work orders right now. I want to kind of get over more into the equipment. We can circle back on this, and if you have questions on this, you know, in terms of maintenance and work orders, Please, you know, please go ahead and, and, and note that in, in, on the question side or even chat. There's chat available in that control panel. But I want to come over here on the equipment side and, and talk more about equipment, the management of equipment, and what's available um, to, uh, to you in, in, as features um, in our solution. Now, we, if we look back at that graphic, that 360 degree, 360 degree view graphic that we have, and we have th these various components outside of an equipment list, the equipment list being center, so primary, this right here represents the equipment, and the equipment can be a list, so it could be just a long list of, of different equipment that you have within the organization. We can have custom views uh, based on equipment type here. It's just a sample of vehicles. So if you have a fleet of vehicles, we can look, you know, like this would be vehicle fleet or, or if you have manufacturing um, plant equipment, it's easy to parse this out. Now, all this, these views that we have come from this main list, but we take some field value and then we'll filter on that field value. So it just makes it easy to be able to, uh, to manage the, uh, the, the different types of equipment that you might have. Uh, so, so this is the, the main list, but also I'll point out here just so to avoid confusion is we talked about vendor management, contract management. So these are all other components to equipment is understanding, first of all, what equipment we have, looking at the details of that equipment, but then do we have contracts associated? Is there some lease agreement? Is there some warranty? Who did we buy that from? Uh, and then be able to make those connections. If we have to perhaps service a piece of equipment from a warranty, Maybe there, we need to reach out to a vendor that's handling that warranty and then be able to, to, um, to get service on that, uh, warranty service on that equipment. So the, the goal is, is to have all these things consolidated together in a view where you don't have to go to do any research. It's, it's all here. So let's start with one piece of equipment. So we'll pick on this HVAC rooftop um, unit. And this unit right here, we'll look at it and you'll see that there is a form. Now Crow Canyon, again, going back to sort of the beginning of that, the slide deck and the intro, is this nitro layer that we refer to is uh, all of the additions that we've made in terms of solutions or apps um, on top of the SharePoint and Office 365 platform. This happens to be one. We have this, this form that allows you to build forms, manage forms, um, and in this form, you'll see that there's a number of fields as well as this tabbing structure. We like the tabbing structure simply because it kind of consolidates everything in one view. It organizes three things in, in sort of sections. So this, this tab that we're looking at here represents the, the general info 
tab of that equipment. What is it? It's a manufacturer, make, model, etc. You can see down below we actually have a, a barcoding feature. So if you use asset tagging or want to use asset tagging in the in the future, there is a barcode um, feature that uh, we're pretty much agnostic in terms of any barcode reader that you want to use, whether it be some app on a mobile device or some other USB or wireless Bluetooth type reader. But this, the barcoding. Uh, allows you to input a number and then easily search if you're out there servicing um, some piece of equipment you can hit the asset tag pull up the record uh, that way you don't have to search for it in the system <clears throat> so beyond the, the basic information that you might have in a list we also want to know who's it been assigned to and then some other details you know where, where is it specifically located it's you know it's assigned out to James Watson he's in facilities it's in building one and uh, there could be other, you know, location could be a city, could be this. Could this is highly configurable, on whatever you need. And it's on the roof, so if if you know he, he he's going to go out, James Watts is going to go out and service this, or someone else will service this. We know that uh, it's not going to be on the ground on the side of the building. It's it's going to be on the roof. And as well as all the finance history, who did we buy this from? Um, as well as the the purchase date. What is the depreciation schedule on this? Uh, when is this? Is at, at some point you know it, we can consider this retirement, or perhaps we consider it fully depreciated. Uh, in this case, generally, if it's a life cycle of 20 years, at this point, we probably probably plan to replace that in 20 years. And what is the total maintenance cost on that? So that maintenance cost can come from labor that we're tracking, or parts, et cetera, and we can track a total cost of of maintenance. This happens to be an image of the specific unit. So if your technician is going out there and he says, "Listen, there's four units on top and they're not properly marked," um, perhaps this this image is not only going to allow him to identify the the correct one, but also kind of in reference to maybe anything else that might be there. So you could use stock photos, or this is an actual photo of a rooftop unit. And then the contracts. So what contracts do we have with whom? And what types of contracts are those? So this one we have a service agreement, and it has some value. We have somebody that's responsible for that, and um, as well as a warranty. Now, contract management or contract renewal management in the context of this system is really about understanding the contract itself that we have a, that we have a contract that it's not in an electronic file somewhere or in a file cabinet but rather it's connected specifically this is sitting obviously in a document file here in the system but we've connected it to this piece of equipment because we know this is related to it so if I click on the service agreement I'm going to open that and um, and then we're going to see some other some metadata around that so we you know this is um, a service agreement for HVAC services and we have an, an original invoice or PO number that, that 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 came from, as well as some terms around this. You know, we have a three, we have a, a an expiration date here. It's in 2017. It expires, and then what are we going to do with with renewal? We do have some different options. This is our our option right here is to auto extend, and this is sort of a common practice with this particular company. But we still want to make a decision before this expiration date is up. This is a fairly expensive piece of equipment, and we we would like to perhaps evaluate the relationship that we have with this vendor before we auto renew. So then we can trigger workflow off this. The fact that we've connected this to that piece of equipment is important, but then also the fact that we're con we're, we're we're consolidating all of our contracts in this system is we can then use our workflow engine to say Scott Restivo is the responsible party expires in 2017 in June let's go ahead and notify Scott through our, our, our alerts and, and notifications mechanism to say 90 or 60 or 30 days or all three of them let's notify Scott that we have an extension coming up you need to take a look at this and determine are we going to auto extend and or are, do, are we going to renegotiate terms or do we want to look for another vendor and all this information we can come back again from the information that we're collecting within the the equipment on all of the service that's taken place in the past and how effective this this vendor is in it servicing the account and then so as we as we do that um, you know we're we're able to also look at here's the contract we can also validate that this unit that we were just looking at is indeed the um, the correct 
um, unit that these guys are servicing. So let's go back to that piece of equipment. And as we go and we look at that piece of equipment, I, I want to also just make it clear. Well, I'll jump in the back end in a little bit to that this is highly configurable. So we have through hundreds and hundreds of conversations, um, as well as doing a lot of market research in, in sort of the competitive landscape that exists with these types of solutions, is to be able to have a, 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 a data form for equipment that captures a lot of this, you know, these these field values here. But every organization is different. Our experience is literally every organization functions slightly different, and they have different requirements. So the flexibility that exists within the system is um, it allows for the sort of the tweaking and customization um, to any business process. The last one here is maintenance. So if we look at this maintenance tab, we see all of the relevant work orders as well as if we look at, we've enabled down here, we've enabled maintenance. So what that means on, on the back end, and as we'll get to this in a second, is there is a plan preventative maintenance component to this. So you can go and schedule all of the maintenance on, you know, at different frequencies relative to this piece of equipment, and then those generate automatically in form of work orders. And so you can go ahead and pre-configure all of the plan preventative maintenance, and then those work orders happen automatically. Here's just a sample. In this case, these are all the work orders that have been created whether they've been ad hoc or they came from you know the automation of, of plant preventive maintenance, you would see a whole history of all maintenance um, that has been done on that. And this again, if we start capturing more information, this is if we go into each one of these work orders, uh, we could have there's a field perhaps for um, the cost of parts, et cetera, and then we can start doing some reporting on you know what did it cost for us to maintain this piece of equipment uh, over the cor course of year. Down below you'll see um, there's also maybe perhaps a related manual uh, and so if someone, you know, a technician is going out to service this and he wants to actually pull up the manual and, and, have, and reference that manual then they would have access to um, to do so as well. Now on the ribbon across the top you'll see there's a, another option here. One we have a, a print feature so if somebody wanted to simply print this out um, instead of bringing a laptop or a tablet or their mobile phone. This is mobile friendly, um, but if they, if, you know, if, if their preference is just let me print this out and let me um, take it to, uh, to the job site, then there is a print function and then we can have, uh, you know, we can print this as well as the work order details out and they can take this along with them in print format. And, but as, as well as there's this concept too of sort of temporary assignment and check in, check out, or reserving equipment. So whether you be a, a, a company that has, say for example, a tool shed with equipment that should be in that unless it's out on a project, uh, tools, especially small tools, uh, are, are, are typically those things that get lost or somehow don't return or walk off on their own. And so we can, before somebody checks that out or, or um, has a project coming up, they can reserve it. But then if they come to somebody in charge of those tools, we can check it, we can check it out first and then we can check it back in. And then we can track that all checked out equipment. You can see off to the left there is a quick, uh, in this quick launch bar, there's a, a, a link here that will open up all checked out equipment. We can create workflows around that that would be an alert and a notification based on due date if it's overdue or perhaps even prior to the due date. Hey, this is due tomorrow. Make sure you get it back on time. So, so these are all just a number of different features, but what's important and I want to point out is all the different information, whether it's, you know, who's it been assigned to, who's using it, um, the history, the contracts, the maintenance history around that. These are all things that are connected to the piece of equipment that just go way beyond a simple list in a spreadsheet and provide a lot more not only just features and functionality and automation through the tools that we have, but also the ability to to look at reports and make real business decisions based on all of the activity um, that's happening within the equipment. Now, as we look at this piece of equipment, um, let's go ahead and go out of this. We have the contract management as well as vendors. So what I'm going to do is quickly just go to a vendor and we'll go back over to that Melgar Heating and Air, which is that, that HVAC, they're servicing that HVAC unit we've been looking at. 
I also want to point out the fact that there's a, there's a vendor management component to this. So uh, on a, an equipment or a safe facilities or some group that's managing this equipment, generally speaking, there's some vendors and different vendor types. So it could be a vendor that you purchased this from. It could be a vendor that's providing you service. It could be vendors of different types. Uh, and so it's we have this this list of vendors that will have all of the vendors you're working with. But then as we drill down, not only do we have basic contact information for that vendor, but we have all the other associations within the solution. So what are the contracts we have with that vendor? And then what is the equipment that either we've purchased or that they're servicing? And this is a service contract. So these are the two pieces of equipment that we've contracted to service with Melgars. And so if it was a vendor that you purchased from, well all this equipment would then be the equipment that you actually purchased from them. So again, the 360 degree view becomes important because no matter where we are in the system, we can um, we can see the whole story. Or at least we have a, a link back to you know the rest of the story here as we see you know we can go directly to the contract or we can go directly to the equipment and of course then we can drill down in on that specific equipment. Now just as a time check here, we, we're about 18 minutes out. Um, what I want to do is there's some other things that I want to show you in terms of dashboards and reports and I'll, I'll quickly touch on that, but I want to come and show you sort of a specific scenario or use case from one of our actual clients. And we'll get to that in one second. That will be in Office 365. So any of you out there op using Office 365, and I will throw out a quick poll here in a second to ask what platform you're using, whether it's an on-prem you know, version or Office 365. I'll throw that in a second. But let's talk about reporting. So reporting, uh, we have a, a report center. You can develop and build all kinds of charts uh, based on all of the data. All the data, whether it comes from the equipment record, the vendor record, contract record, um, even there's the purchase order system here as well, we can generate all kinds of data and all kinds of reports. We can come in a dashboard of just a view of charts here or it could be like the manager dashboard where we could choose to insert filtered list views as well as charts. Now when we're looking at the, these dashboards, these dashboards and the reports within the dashboards are generated from our, our report center, or this report generator here. So it's very simple, intuitive report center where you can just choose a title. You're choosing what do I want to report on? Do I want to report on contracts? Do I want to look at all of the contracts by vendors? Uh, do I want to look at all equipment by site or by location or by warehouse? You can select these, you know, the, the different field values that you want to compare, and just simply create the report. When you create those report, you'll have generally, you know, a long list of reports that you have um, stored here. But then you can take those reports and drag those into dashboards um, to make those useful to, you know, some individual that needs to see um, a consolidated sort of dashboard of those reports. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned is this purchase order system. So we do have a purchase order system as well that this is not necessarily part of our equipment tracking solution. It's a bolt-on um, add-on solution that, that can be added. Many of our clients say, yes, we have equipment that we're tracking, but we also need to be able to make purchase requests and then generate purchase orders from that. And then once we do that, what I need to do is once the order has been fulfilled, we've received that equipment on our docks, I want to then convert the equipment that we have uh, purchased into an equipment record. And so we can do that here. So we can start from the purchase request that comes from a, a requester, goes through the approval process that we can customize to however you want to approve it based on tiers, um, you know, amounts, um, a, a business department heads, whoever might need to approve it, we can configure that within the system. But it will go through the approval process. Once it's been approved, you can use your own PO system and or if you don't have one or you want to use this, we can we have a PO system here. So <clears throat> we can take these um, these uh, uh, this, the, the purchase requests and then as we and then as we convert them to, for example, this this rooftop unit here, once we have this purchase order, I can go in here and I can I can generate a, uh, an, a new equipment record from that once that's a, arrived. So this 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 system again. I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is an add-on or a bolt-on to it, um, and it, it's it's maybe not everybody's interested, but we do have a number of our our customers that find this very valuable and that becomes part of the whole business process through sort of acquisition, all the way through the life cycle to retirement. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump I'm going to jump out of this solution and jump into our Office 365 environment. 
Now this is more of a configured solution based on some requirements that one of our clients had. They're an offshore um, uh, sort of vessel recovery as well as they do a lot of underwater repairs on oil rigs. So they have vessels that go out to sea and either recover a sunken ship or they repair a ship that um, you know, has a problem or again oil rigs. And so when they go out, they're out for many weeks at a time and they have to get equipment together, get them on the rig, make sure that equipment is inspected, make sure it's ready to go, organize them in, in what they call their cases and kits, and then they ship, they assign them out to a project and they go out to sea. Now, so they also have different warehouses around the world, and so they wanted to keep track of all of the warehouses, all of the equipment that uh, is, is in those warehouses, so then they can properly gather the equipment for the projects that they have. Uh, so, so what we want to do is, is I just want to showcase the fact that every organization is different. The system is highly flexible and is, and is able to conform to a particular sort of business requirement in equipment tracking. So this this is just, I'm just going to run you through a quick sample and then we're going to stop. I'll spend about three minutes doing this. We'll stop. We'll, um, we'll go through some, you know, sort of questions and it looks to me that there's not a lot of questions that have come through. So this is kind of like your, your last chance to ask your question if you have one um, and or we have some common questions that we'll address um, during that time. But I, I, if, if you can in the last, in the next three or four minutes, go ahead and post a question and we'd love to, to, to answer those. So in this in this case, they had a, a, a number of you know pieces of equipment that they were tracking individually, <clears throat> and they need to. And there's a whole sort of service component as these go out to sea. They got to come back and they got to be clean. They got to be serviced, and uh, and so there's a whole business workflow around that service component. But also they wanted to know you know who did I buy this from and all the details there. But beyond that is they want to know that this piece of equipment needs to be associated with a case. So if you think of maybe perhaps even a media cart would be a good example and or somebody's cubicle or, or a conference room, there's some equipment in that conference room and you could call that conference room a container and, and you know, and, and for, for lack of better term and then in that container you could see what is what are all the pieces of equipment in the conference room, what are all the, the, the equipment in the break room that I need to be concerned about. So. So the individual level, and then as we look at, say for example, this subsea controller, let's go over here and, and we can see that it's in this case for mechanical caliper control bottles, and it's located in, in the Nigeria warehouse. I'm going to open this up and show you here. You can see the views off here. I can go directly to you know, the various cases, the various kits. Um, so this is kind of a tiered. you got equipment, cases have equipment in it, kits have cases in it. So in this case, we have you know the, the metadata around that, uh, all the you know location, all the other information you've seen already. But we have this kit number, so it's sitting in. Oh well, before we go into the kit, I think let's go over first of all and see that it's in a case. So we can see it's it's related to a kit, also a case. So if we go to this case, I'm going to open this up, and you'll see that here is the case, and literally you can see kind of if you imagine a, a suitcase of type with a number of of you know small pieces of equipment in it <clears throat> this is the case and if we look at let's validate that you know all the equipment is in that case so if somebody were to come pull in a case out and I need to allocate that to a project I need to open that up and see does it have the subsea control does it have this calibration jig does it have all this equipment and yes it does that's great um, and so, and perhaps even using barcoding, and they want to hit all the barcodes and make sure that they're all there and it's the right piece of equipment. That's all possible. So, but when we look at this this case, we say, well, there's a case, but also this case is associated with the kit. So, you know, the next box that um, that uh, you know, uh, in terms of levels or tiers, we'll say there's the caliper kit. Let's go ahead and make sure that this case it's in the proper kit, but here are all the cases in this kit. So when I ship this out, I say for this project, I need um, the kit. We call it container A, um, and um, and and it represents all the the equipment that's in the case. So it's easy for me to go to each one of these cases, validate the equipment, put them all together, put them in the kit, ship the kit out. So this is just a sample of of how one of our customers wanted to use. Um, the equipment and tracking their equipment. So, as we started this off, we gave them the you know the demo, just like we're doing here, and they said, "Yeah, that's great." 
Um, but we need to track equipment differently. We also need to be able to know that it, what warehouse is it in, and so we can come and we can do a warehouse view and say, well, here's one, any one of our warehouse locations, and in that warehouse we have all this equipment. These views can be different, so we could show this is a uh, a warehouse that um, you know, like for example, Nigeria. Over here, we can just specifically break that down. It doesn't have to be this kind of view. We could just say Nigeria warehouse, and it will open up all of the equipment that's in the Nigeria warehouse. So, so this is what this is what they needed, and so um, they struggled trying to find something in the marketplace that allowed this level of flexibility. Uh, and they discovered that um, also that in Office 365, they really wanted to leverage that environment and the investment there, and um, and this became a great platform and our solution, a great solution on that platform for them to build their equipment tracking solution. Now, we have about eight minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and stop here at this, at this time. And Scott, I know that uh, you know, we have, there's a number of common questions that uh, people, I can probably kick it off with a couple and then you have some as well since uh, everyone's been fairly quiet here. But one of the things that, I, I, that, we, that we're asked regularly is, uh, first of all, what versions of SharePoint does it support? And while I'm, ta while I'm talking about this, I'm going to go ahead and, and throw out a, uh, a poll that, will, that is going to ask you, you know, what, what version of SharePoint or if you're on Office 365, what are you using today? But you know, what, what, uh, what versions do we support? Is this you know, work on SharePoint on-prem, Office 365? And the answer is yes. So in, any version of SharePoint that you might have, as well as if you're on-prem and it's foundations, standard, enterprise, it doesn't matter. Our, our product works on, on any one of them. Uh, Scott, do you, you have any, any questions that you want to, uh, standard questions that, that you hear that you want to address at this time? Well, why they're doing this poll, where you know people are letting us know what version they're in, as you said, our program runs in both Office 365 and SharePoint on-premises. Uh, as far as questions, well, we hear so you know we get calls all day, well, you know, very often from asset people looking for asset management, looking for equipment tracking. As far as specific questions with with equipment tracking, I think you covered a lot of a lot of what. What goes on with that? It's some people want very simple equipment tracking; they just want to know where it is. Some people are more focused on work orders, and the equipment is almost secondary. Some people have leased equipment, so uh, one thing is tying it in with, say, a customer, and not just a vendor database, but a customer database, where they're your clients. They're your clients out there. You leased out. Uh, one company was leasing copiers, another one was leasing other equipment, or it could be even the fact that you have a uh, you know, say a job site, different projects, so you lease out fencing or you lease out trucks to them or you lease out uh, something that's part of that temporary project. So there's the idea that it's not just internal equipment but also equipment that is either leased out and has to be serviced or leased out for a particular project and then has to be retracted back in. And as you mentioned, there was that offshore company that was doing the repair of offshore platforms and things like that and they needed to send the boat and make sure the boat had all the right you know equipment and stuff in it when it goes out there to do the repair so so what I'm trying to say is it can be either very simple focused on work orders or it can be very uh, complex involving multiple layers of equipment with inventory and parts and so we really have the full range of capabilities the most important thing is to have people that we talk to people individually and hope some of the attendees will be interested enough that we'll have one-on-one -on -one conversations, perhaps show the demo and address their specific questions exactly. So uh, let's see what happens out of that. But um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so another thing too is, I'm, is thanks Scott for addressing that. Another thing is uh, yesterday during our the couple of the webinars that we did, uh, and again, in almost every demo we do, people ask this question is, this what 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 comes out of the box, and what uh, what's available in terms of configuration, or what and how much work you know do I need to invest in the configuration? So the answer is what comes out of the box are the things that I've shown you today. Now this in this case of this this client of ours that had the kits and cases, those were things that needed to be 
configured within the system. But this is a 100% no-code solution, so we do have an app, this what we call our application administration that allows you to dive into all of the tools and again, no-code tools um, that uh, to allow you to come in on your own and and create any the environment that you need. So whether it be managing your forms and managing the the fields within those forms. Then we have a, a sort of a we call our Crow Canyon apps here. We have a suite of apps that allow you to do that. So I'll just kind of show you the sneak peek of you know the fact that, that we have a forms manager that allows you to come in and take that form, say for the equipment, any one of the forms, whether it be contracts, vendors, equipment, work order forms, and you can come in and um, and tweak that form, and it can be whatever you need it to be. And so when you're in that uh, forms manager, then We'll just let's just go in here and just uh, just go to the equipment form, and I'll show you. Here's just this is what the app is, and again, it's very intuitive, very very sort of easy to use interface for you to come and say, well, here's the equipment information. I'm gonna click on edit. These are all the fields that is, exist there today. Here's a whole bucket list of other fields. You can create your own custom fields that that uh, you know and and put those in this bucket list and drag them over. You can sort them around, move them around. So it's all very intuitive in terms of <clears throat> your ability to manage this form. If you want to create more tabs on here, there's a new tab option to say create, you know, it's new tab. And uh, and so it's about data collection. So if you want to, you know, save this and we say, well, we have another tab within this piece of equipment type, we'll just say if it's heavy equipment and this tab is going to represent a lot of details about some heavy equipment. Um, then you can build out, you can extend out this form. It's very extensible, as well as permissioning. If you have different groups that handle different types of equipment, we can permission the tabs. Say, for example, to <clears throat> someone has full control, or they have read access only, or hide. So no, no see if they don't have permissions, they just won't see those aspects of of the form. As well as even at the, what they call column permissions, which are the fields. If you want someone to to be able to have full control to input data and others to have read access only, we can do that here. So this is just a sample of the you know the the applications we have. So there's the the applications you know are go from something very simple as sort of color indicator what we call color indicator where you can mark say high priority or if there's something that um, you just want to sort within the list for some color coding you can do that. We have branding a branding app to make this customize the look and feel of this. We have um, um, a, a workflow manager here which allows you to create very basic workflow like an escalation or an alert to very complex workflow for service um, as well so there could be you know starts off with comes into the service center gets inspected then there you know once it's been inspected that's been a, been completed and then it goes on to another part of the process and there's a series of work orders that get generated out of that workflow so you can you can do that but another thing that I haven't shown you is this concept of employee portals and so the employee portals are, are, are for end users to be able to submit. Now this is IT help desk ticket. That's not a very good uh, um, um, example here because it, it should be the, the facilities um, portal. But the fact is, is that there is a there is a, a form in here for someone to submit a request. There is the ability to to view. Uh, existing requests, as well as perhaps search knowledge base for help or our standard operating procedures docs or how-to docs that might exist. We haven't covered the knowledge base and you know how what that knowledge base might have in it, um, but I'll just show you. Here's just a sample of you can do a search, have all your you know, documents in there, and then perhaps you know a document might look like like this. Now as this is popping up. Um, I want to first of all thank you all for attending. We're at the top of the hour here, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. And it's this kind of this last sample of knowledge based articles can have video, they can have step by step instructions, links, all kinds of information in here that you can leverage within the system. So as you can see, as we're I'm trying to <clears throat> scramble to wrap this up is there's there's a lot that we can discuss and what I'd encourage you to do is is reach back out to us if you see anything here that you like they're interested you like to sort of do a deeper dive to reach out to us we can do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with you and we can um, you know then we can go in and specifically based on your um, your business requirements talk about how this solution can then you know cater to your specific business needs or in in process so Here's just you know, how you can stay in touch with us. You can go to our website. There's an 800 number there. You can send us an email, sales at crocanion.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
<clears throat> there, we have a blog that has a lot of really good information on our blog as well. It's kind of one of our sort of most popular pages on our website, people coming and reading all the content that we publish there. So again, I want to thank you for the time you spent with us in this hour, and we'll look forward to connecting with you hopefully soon in the, in the, in the near future. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jeff.